This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, let's carry on. Uh, we're looking at divisional performance measurement. So in the previous lecture, I was talking about what we mean by a division and so on. Uh, and the main thing was the problem about how to measure the performance, or the financial performance, um, of an investment division. Uh, then I said investment division, they can make the decision about uh, new capital investment. But I want to make sure that we're measuring the performance in a way that makes the manager want to do what's good for the company. If it's good for the company, if this new investment is generating enough profit that it's good for the company, then I want to make sure he's motivated to make that decision. If it's bad for the company, I want to make sure the way I'm measuring this performance makes him not want to take it. And so I need a way of relating the profit to the amount invested so that each year I can measure, is he generating sufficient profit for the total that's been invested? And the most obvious way is return on investment or ROI, which as you'll see is effectively the same as return on capital employed, but we don't call it capital employed because the division doesn't really have it, its own capital, you know, there is only one company. But let me show you what I mean with a very simple example, so for you to practice how it's presented in the exam, but the actual arithmetic's no harder. Example one. Arcania PLC has divisions throughout the Baltic states. The Ventspils division is currently making a profit of 82,000 on investment of 500,000. Arcania, which is the whole company, has a target return of 15%. So for whatever reason, the company as well wants to earn at least 15% on investment. You know, perhaps that's what we've been currently earning overall. Uh, the manager of Ventspils is considering a new investment which will require additional investment of 100,000 and will generate additional profit of 17,000 a year. And we're asked to do two things. First of all, is the new investment attractive to the company as a whole? Well, that's no problem. This new investment, the return on the new investment, is generating 17,000 a year on an investment of 100,000. So this new machine is uh, going to generate a return of 17%. Our target is 15% for the company. And therefore, surely, no argument. It's more than the target. And so the company wants to accept. No problem. Except, of course, if we've given the manager uh, autonomy and it's an investment division, I can't just tell him, you must accept this um, new investment. That's taking away autonomy. You know, I've made him manager, I'm letting him make the decision. And so I have to make sure that the way I'm going to measure his performance, and he knows the way his performance will be measured, that I measure it in a way that makes sure he wants to do the investment. And so part B says, calculate the return on investment uh, for the division with or without the new investment. Well, the return on investment, I tell the um, manager that every year I'm going to measure its performance and I'll measure it using return on investment. And so let me show you what it is. First of all, if he doesn't do 
this new machine. The return on investment is defined as being the profits as a percent of the total investment. in the division. So I said earlier, just like return on capital employed, uh, but because the division itself isn't a company and doesn't have share capital, etc., um, it's basically the total net assets of the division. And so if it doesn't do this investment, what return will the division be showing? They're currently making a profit of 82,000 a year, uh, the total investment in the division is half a million. And so currently, it's reporting 16.4%. And if I've told the manager, that's what I'm going to measure you on, each year I'll calculate return on investment. If it's gone up, you're doing well. If it's gone down, you're doing badly. Then that's all the manager cares about. And when he's wondering, whether or not to take this new investment, he'll be saying to himself, what will happen What will happen to my return on investment if we do go ahead? Because if it goes up, I'm going to be rewarded, and so I want to take it. If it goes down, I won't be rewarded, and so I won't want to take it. So what's going to happen to the ROI if we take it? Well, the profit will go up. It was 82,000. But the new investment, we think, will give an extra 17. So profit will go up to 99. Great. But uh, the total investment will go up. It was 500. But there's another, how much is it? 100. It'll go up to 600. And so what happens to the return on investment? Profit 99 on the investment of uh, 600. Ah, it goes up to 16.5%. And I know I keep repeating, but you see, this is all the manager's going to care about. If that's the way his performance is being measured, if it goes up, then he's happy to do it. If it goes down, he isn't. Well, of course, it's got to go up. And so the manager is motivated to accept. We already knew the company as a whole wanted it because it's more than target. Uh, therefore, it is goal congruent. What's good for the manager here is also good for the company. So no problem. No problem. I mean, some people say, why are we going to do all this trouble? Why not just say the target is 15% or whatever it was. But do appreciate the manager is making lots of decisions every day. It's not just the new investment. Making decisions about can we cut costs? Uh, shall we put prices up and so on? Well, I can't go checking every day. What have you done today? Was that good? Was that bad? I don't care. As long as, normally, you know, at the end of the year, as long as overall things have improved. Return on investment, an obvious way of measuring. If it goes up, good. I don't care how he achieved it. If it goes down, bad. And here, well, it has been goal congruent. But look at example two. It's exactly the same, except this time the investment costs 100,000 and gives additional profit of 16,000. Let's do it again. Uh, is the new investment attractive to the company as a whole? Calculate the ROI with and without. Well, as far as the company is concerned, the company's got an overall target of 15%. Uh, this isn't a choice about the machines, it's a new question. 
But if the new machine gets more than 15%, the company wants it. Well, the new investment. It gives 16,000 a year on investment of 100, so it's giving a return of 16%. The company's target is 15, and therefore it's worthwhile. The company wants to accept. But just as before, if we've given them autonomy, it's an investment division, it's not my decision. I can't tell him to accept it, otherwise I'm taking away autonomy. It's up to him to decide based on how we're measuring his performance. And so what's he going to do this time? Just as before, the manager is going to say, what would happen to my performance measure, the return on investment? Just as before, if we don't do the new machine, the new investment, the ROI 82,000 on 500, 16.4%. And you'll say, ah, if I do the new investment, what's going to happen? Profit will go up again, 82,000, you go up by 16 to 98. Then your investment, will, uh, sorry, the total investment will have gone up from 500 by 100 to 600. And what happens to the return on investment? Uh, the profit would be 98 on 600, 16.3%. And now we've got a problem. Uh, because, and I think it should already be obvious from what I've said, if he's being measured on his return on investment, he's, he's only been going to be rewarded if it increases. Why on earth would he take on this new investment <clears throat> when his performance measure, when it goes down? The manager will not accept. And this is the problem. Because <clears throat> remember in part A, the company still wants it. Anything more than 15, the company's happy with. The manager, though, will reject it. The decision is not goal congruent. What's good for him, in fact, is not good for the company. And see why it's happening. You see, at the moment, this company, uh, this division is doing better than Target. You know, overall, we want 15. This division is doing six, getting 16.4. Uh, They're already doing better, but this new project makes them do worse this time. They don't want it. And it can happen both ways, you see. Suppose you had um, a division that's doing worse than Target. Um, that currently, a division that's only giving 13%. It's doing worse than Target, but, you know, I put this manager in to try and improve things. And suppose he has a new investment, uh, which is giving 40... Well, actually, I'll write it separately, otherwise it confuses... At the moment, without the new, suppose the return on investment is, what did I say, 13%. It's not good enough for me. But the new manager, his job is to improve it. If he can improve that, then he'll get his reward. He's offered a new investment, which gives 14%. But if a company's target is 15, we don't want him to take that new investment. Company, if the target's 15, they do not want. But what's the manager going to do? Surely, if he's currently 13 and adds on a new investment within 14, 
the new uh, return on investment will be higher. And he'll accept it. I hope I'm not confusing their Russians with that bit, but the point is, there's not always a problem. I mean, in example one, return on investment, got a go, go, congruent decision. But as I'm trying to explain, and look back at example two, um, measuring performance on that basis can lose goal congruence. And that's the reason why that although return on investment is the most obvious way of measuring performance, the most common way, there is an alternative which, in theory certainly, I think you'll agree in a minute is better. And it's called residual income. Or RI. And this time, we tell the manager we'll measure their performance based on residual income. And let me show you um, how we calculate residual income, what it is. And we'll use the figures again from example one. So if you look back at example one, then Spills is currently making a profit of 82,000 on investment of half a million. There's a, this new investment we're considering. And remember the company's target is 15%. So the company wants to accept Ah, but the manager's been measured on residual income. Let me show you how we do it. First of all, <clears throat> without the new investment, what we do is we tell the manager that the way we'll measure is we'll take the profit, and if he doesn't do the new investment, the profit is 82,000. We want more profit, obviously, but we need to make sure that we're tying the profit in with the amount invested. So to measure him, instead of measuring him just on the profit figure, we subtract what we call notional or imputed interest on the amount invested. Now I'll explain why I've used the words notion or imputed in one moment. But we subtract interest on the amount invested at the target return. So he's told in advance that when we come to measure your performance, we'll take the profit figure, but we'll subtract 15% of the total investment. And without the new investment, the total investment is half a million. 15% of that is 75,000. And so what he'll be measured on is whatever's left, 7,000. That is the residual income. We'll do that each year, but if that figure increases, he'll get rewarded. If that figure falls, the residual income, um, he'll be punished. And the reason I've called it notional or imputed, uh, there is no sort of invoice for interest. It means pretend. It's sort of like to take a piece of paper at the end of the year um, and just do a bit of arithmetic uh, and see what figure we're left with. And so when he's deciding whether or not to take the new one, he'll say, well, what happens to my residual income? Does it go up or down? Well, with the new investment, uh, the profit, certainly profit goes up. Was 82, goes up by 17, goes up to 99. 
However, because there's been new investment, this notional interest figure will go up as well. 15%, the new in total is 600. It'll go up to 90,000. The residual income, 9,000. And of course, it's gonna, it's good for the manager. The manager accepts. And it is goal congruent. So that's what residual income is. However, for example, one, didn't matter which way we were measuring him, return on investment, residual income, he would have made a goal congruent decision he wanted to accept. But now, look at example two. If you remember, with example two, the new investment was giving 16%, so again, the company wants to accept. But when we used return on investment, there was that problem. Company wanted it, manager doesn't. Lose go congruence. But now let's repeat uh, example two, using residual income. We just saw without the new investment, the profits would be 82,000. Uh, the notional interest, 15% of half a million, 75,000. Residual income. Again, manager's going to say what will happen to my performance measure if we do the project, the new investment. Profit goes up. It was 82, in example two, it goes up by 16,000. So profit does go up, obviously, to 98,000. There's been new investment, the interest will go up. Uh, 15% on, uh, it's gone up to 600,000, which is 90,000. Residual income, 8,000. And it's gone up. And of course it's gone up. Automatically it will go up, provided the uh, extra profit is more than 15% of the investment. It's forced him uh, to want to accept anything giving more than 15. And so it's gone up. The manager accepts. And we've solved the problem. It is goal congruent. I shall talk about advantages, disadvantages, but there's the arithmetic. It's not hard at all. Uh, they can make it uh, quite a bit longer. You must practice questions. But the principle never changes. Um, but there are the two ways. Return on investment, residual income. And whatever I say shortly about advantages, disadvantages, I think you can see, um, sort of theoretically, if that's the right word, residual income perhaps is better because we automatically get goal congruence. All right, um, I want to have a short chat about um, why residual income, why general investment, but I'll rather make it too long, I'll stop there. But the final letter on this, um, I think I've left space, yeah, reasons for using ROI, reasons for using residual income.